Hello, creative friends. Today I'm going to show you how I built Jasmine's mouse house. This is Rose. Oops. She's going to supervise the construction of the house till Jasmine comes back from her trip to the beach. Now let's start. You'll need PVA glue, any kind will do, toilet paper, tissue paper, and masking tape, cardboard, different sizes, paper bags, and some newspapers, aluminum foil, the stronger, the better, and sawdust, which is optional. Here I'm using thick cardboard, and I put wood on the bottom so it won't warp. I cut it 50 centimeters by 35. Now don't use the shiny side of your foil. It's better to use the unshiny side. I'm folding it, I think, four times. If you have thinner foil, then I would suggest folding it maybe six or seven times. I'm just seeing if it's enough for the place that I drew, crunching it from the bottom to make a base. I'm trying to round it a little bit so it'll fit the drawing. I'm using hot glue to attach it. You need quite a lot of hot glue to keep it in place. Now I'm taping it with masking tape just to secure it more. And now I'm going to put masking tape all around it, front and back. Now that we're done, I'm going to start to paper mache some of the newspapers. This is the consistency of the glue. I added water to it to make it a little bit more watery because it was thick. And you keep on putting one over the other until we're done on both sides. Now you see that circle I made? It's because I want to put a window there in the future. So I want to make sure that I don't block it with something. Here I'm crunching up the foil just to make like branches and things coming out. You know how trees are. I'm adding some hot glue and just securing it to the place I want. Of course, this is all optional. You can make your tree the way you want it. Well, it's a part of a tree, <laughs> not a whole tree. It's more like it's rotted and empty from the inside and that's where the house is going to be 
And now I'm going to mask it with masking tape. Or cover it with masking tape, I mean. <laughs> you need the masking tape because most of the time paper towel doesn't stick on foil. Here I'm putting diluted PVA glue. And I sprayed my paper towels with a little bit of water just so I can crunch them up easily. I don't like putting my hands in the glue a lot. And this is my way of trying to eliminate that thing. Now I'm trying to shape it to look like bark. And you see the sides are all ripped off because when I want to put the next one on it, you don't want that straight line to show. You want it to blend in. If you don't rip your paper towel, you will see straight lines. I didn't rip the bottom because I know it's going to be covered up with another layer. And you just keep on going until you're done with that side. Make sure there's enough glue to hold it up. After you secure it, then put some glue on top of it. And squish it in place. Now that we're done with that, any parts that you see that dried out a little bit, put more glue and wet it because now we're going to be putting sawdust on it. Just pack it on. Now this was by coincidence. It's not like I did it on purpose. I got the idea when one time I was making a small bottle and sawdust fell all over it. And I was almost going to cry. I thought that project was ruined but I decided oh well just let it dry put more sawdust all over it and see what happens and oh my god the result was so phenomenal I'm like wow I wish I knew this before here I'm putting black acrylic paint and it's watered down with some glue because you want to keep those pieces of sawdust in their place. And don't brush it, just stroke, punch it in. Now I'm using different colors, brown, beige, gray. You can use any color you want. You'll see later on I changed the color. I can never keep my mind on one thing. I always keep on changing my mind. I do something and I look at it for a day or two and then I'm like, no, I don't like this. And I change it. But that's okay. I think all crafters and creators do the same thing. Now I'm highlighting the gray just by dry brushing now i'm using the cream color or what was it it was cashmere tan 
also just dry brushing. Now we're done with that, we're going to start from the inside. I'm using here a brown paper bag. And I'm trying to make it look like the inside of the bark. I'm just measuring here, just with my fingers. You don't need precise measurements. just making sure that it'll fit I know it's too big but now you see why I'm gonna crumble it and crumble it and crumble it and keep on crumbling until I'm happy with the result I want it to look like that piece of bark that I have crumble again and again, and again, until I get this result and I'm happy with it. Like, yeah, almost. <laughs> again, back to the glue. Now you see I have a lot of sawdust there. That's no problem. Now I'm looking for my brush and I can't find it. Always use battered old brushes because the glue ruins your brushes. Never use good brushes for glue. Now after I've coated it all with the glue, I'm going to put my bag And it won't stay in one place, so I got my little pins. I'm just pinning it in place just temporarily until I can get the others because it kept on slipping and sliding on me. I'm just going to pat it down until it sticks to the whole surface. And then I'm going to cut the excess. Now I'm putting also glue on top of it. Now all these layers that you're seeing, you might think this is just too much. But this is what makes it strong and sturdy. Now after the glue dried, or half dried, just that it doesn't stick that much, I'm putting well, I'm dipping the toilet paper in the glue that's diluted with water and then just squishing it up in my fingers and putting it all around just to remove you know where you can see the difference where the paper is and the bark is I want it to look like one piece and at the same time look like the tree has been broken like it's all broken up bark and not just cut with a knife or a saw it's a little bit messy I know but it's fun And now we're going to leave that to dry. And 
and don't forget to clean your surface these are going to be the floors and you don't want anything on them like make sure you don't have any paper towel any toilet paper any glue anything now that it's all dry I'm gonna start painting it first base coat is gonna be black you have to make sure that it goes through everything like you have to flip it all over and after that I'm painting the inside trying to mimic oh that color is gonna change so many times I forgot how many times I changed it but this is the first trial I'm dipping it between two colors and just going crazy now it's time to make the walls so I'm using very very thin cardboard and you can't cut that or serrate it so I'm just rolling it rolling it to get it into the shape I want I'm sorry that you can't really see what I'm doing but I'm only gluing it with hot glue And I cut two more other pieces. I'm going to be putting them on the other side. Same thing, glue them with hot glue. Now I'm following where I drew my rooms on the box. But I'm not going to the corners because I want it to be more rounded. Now I'm trying to see where my door is going to go. I'm gonna mark it. And you have to cut the door. Well, you don't have to. I just figured it's gonna be easier if I cut it now. And then I'll be cutting the excess cardboard also. I'm going to let it overlap a little bit just to give it more support. You won't be able to see that later on. I'm using some hot glue. Now, don't make my mistake. Remember when I was putting all that glue? Well, oops, I can't be put my flooring then. So I gotta remove it. So I had to heat, heat it up with my heat gun, scrape it off, and then I'm using tacky glue to support it. Like, I don't care about the outside. That's going to be covered up, but the inside, I need the floors to be 
level. I don't want any bumps. So I'm putting here masking tape while it's wet. I found out it makes the masking tape much more sturdier. It doesn't peel off anymore. And that thing stays there for life. Press it in real good into the corner. You don't want it to be coming out. Now here, I've decided I want another door. So I'm cutting it out. Be very careful. Don't rush it. And because the cardboard isn't that thick, it's quite easy. If you notice, I'm twisting my X-Acto knife left and right just so I can handle it and, you know, be in more control of it. Now you see on the bottom, it is hard to get it out. My mistake. I should have cut it before I put the tape and all that glue. But mm, we learn. <laughs> Now, when you cut out all your windows and doors, don't throw away those parts. You'll need them as your pattern for the size of your windows and doors. Here I'm paper mache another bag or paper bag. I'm going to be doing it from the outside and the inside. Yeah, that's the door. I decided to put a arch on the top, so I had to tape it. If you notice, I have lines on my walls, and this is where I want first floor and the ground floor. And I'm going to be putting my paper or the paper bag like right at the edge, and that will give me like a line a straight line that later on i know where this the room starts and where it ends Here I'm cutting the extra off. And I'm trying to keep it straight with the top part because the cardboard wasn't very straight and I wanted it that tall. But no worries. It won't show. Now you're going to say, oh my God, you're covering the window. Yes, I'm covering the window. Later on, I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife and open that up. These are the fold lines. I don't want them to show, so I'm like squishing them with my nail just to get rid of them.
and you see I'm putting glue between them and I'm just gonna glue them together and that way I have a straight line I took one of the other windows that I cut and I used it as a template just put some masking tape to draw the window so all the windows will be the same size here I'm just drawing the straight lines where the masking tape was Now I'm checking to see, is it the right size for my mouse, Rose, or not? Rose is checking it out. She likes it. And now for the rest of the house, we're going to paper mache it from the outside. I put some masking tape between those two because I wanted it to be like one part and I didn't want it to go way deep inside just a small curve and if you notice when I put the paper on, it starts to crumble because it got wet and it's expanding. So I had to remove it, pull it a little bit, fix it, and then put it back on again. So to eliminate that problem, I'm first putting glue on the paper, leaving it until it gets saturated and stretches out as much as it wants and then I can use it you see how this one's beginning to curve because it's beginning to expand so I'm gonna leave it until it flattens out by itself then I know that it's not gonna stretch anymore and I'm using the flat one that way I can guarantee that I won't be getting any wrinkles You see, nice and flat. I needed to put another piece of foil between the house and the bark. That's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and like and share. See you next week.